U.S. Special Operations Forces traveled to Alaska in February to train for warfare in the Arctic. His trip reflects the U.S. military's increasing focus on the Arctic, which is becoming more accessible. The United States is not the only country interested in Arctic security, and U.S. operators are not alone there. With peer warfare back on the agenda, U.S. special operators are focusing their training on environments in which they are most likely to find themselves involved. The frigid Arctic is one such environment, and Navy SEALs and special warfare fighter crews, Green Berets, and elite Army and Air Commando aviators recently spent nearly a month training in it. A 10th Special Forces Group, Airborne, Sniper during pre-deployment training for Arctic Edge 22 in Alaska on February 21, 2022. From late February to mid-March, conventional and special operations units convened for Arctic Edge 22, the U.S. Army's flagship Arctic warfare exercise. Operators from across the U.S. special operations community joined conventional forces and local, state, and federal law enforcement in Alaska. Green Berets from the 10th Special Forces Group and 19th Special Forces Group conducted long-range patrols using snowshoes and skis along the Arctic Ocean and the Bering Strait. The Green Berets conducted exfiltration training with elite night stalkers from the 160th Special Operations Aviation Regiment. Special Forces operators also worked with local and federal law enforcement in a simulated homeland defense scenario. On the Navy side, SEALs honed their Arctic survival skills and underwent special reconnaissance training. Navy SWCC operators also worked with Coast Guard commands and practiced defending critical infrastructure. One of the most interesting parts of the training the SEALs did was a free fall jump into an ice floe in the Arctic Ocean and connecting with the USS Pasadena, a Los Angeles-class attack submarine participating in the biennial ice exercise. Finally, U.S. Air Force Air Commands provided rotary wing support to conventional units and special operations elements participating in the drills. The special operations aspects of the exercise were overseen by U.S. Special Operations Command North, led by Brig. Gen. Sean Satterfield. Special Operations Forces tested the equipment and looked for innovative ways to survive in the Arctic and thrive in the Arctic, Satterfield said in a statement. Satterfield noted that special operators not only trained for specific mission sets, but also developed relationships with local communities, including Alaska natives, to gain knowledge of their techniques, practices, and procedures on how they succeed in the weather. A Green Beret during pre-deployment training for Exercise Arctic Edge 22, at Fort Wainwright in Alaska, on February 19, 2022. As the Arctic becomes more accessible, it renewed importance to U.S. national security. As a result, U.S. special operations have been training inside and outside the region to become more familiar with the conditions they will find there. One of his training methods has been the Special Operations Winter Mountain Operator Course, held twice a year in Colorado. The course is open to all Special Operations Units but is primarily attended by Green Berets from the 10th Special Forces Group, which has Europe as its area of responsibility. True to its name, SOWMOC focuses on mountain and winter warfare. Participants learn winter warfare survival skills such as navigating in snowy conditions and small unit tactics for an Arctic environment as well as how to infiltrate and exit winter warfare environments using skis, snowshoes, and snowmobiles. The U.S. is not the only country with security interests in the Arctic, and U.S. special operators are not alone in their efforts there. Special Operations Command North continues to expand and strengthen relationships with foreign special operations units, including Canadian and Danish commandos. Our partners and allies are critical and fundamental to our mission at SOCNORTH. We routinely train and coordinate with Canadian SOF and Danish Special Operations Observed Arctic Edge this year, Satterfield said. The abundant resources and more direct shipping lanes in the Arctic Circle and the melting ice that makes them more accessible are making the Arctic a geopolitical real estate of the first order. The United States shares the region with six close allies and partners, Canada, Denmark, Norway, Finland, Sweden, 
Iceland, and one of its main enemies, Russia. China has also shown interest in the region, describing itself as a quasi-Arctic state and sending observers to meetings of the Arctic Council, which is made up of those eight countries with Arctic territory. Amid intensifying competition with Russia and China, the U.S. military's interest in the Arctic, and its preparations to fight there, will only increase. We want to partner with allies who have an interest in protecting our lands and approaches in the Arctic. Partnerships are critical to raising awareness across domains in the U.S. Northern Command Area of Responsibility, Satterfield said.